those periods at basically all of the public parking lots and on street parking in the downtown area. So it's not going to include the private parking lots um, across the street um, or some of the other locations you know, in the downtown area. Similar to the traffic study, we go through the same process where we identify the new parking demand that this development is going to generate. We're showing that the site is going to generate between 108 and 196 <coughs> parking demand during the various peak hours. And one of the things that kind of helps a development like this is the varying land uses don't all peak at the same time. So residential is going to have this highest peak in the evening and overnight, whereas office is going to be during the day. And there's the blending of those demands, and it kind of tends to drop down that overall demand. As Kyle indicated, there will be parking that's provided on site. So the kind of the net um, change would be 73 new spaces provided, not including the residential. So we're kind of looking at it just from the office and, and retail perspective, kind of per the uh, City of Delafield code. We layered the new traffic onto the existing occupancies kind of throughout the city and looked at what would happen during each of those peak periods. Found that the um, occupancy will increase somewhat, but during those peak periods, the maximum occupancy is going to be 76%. So it's going to range anywhere from 65 to 76 percent during those peak times. So there still is going to be about a 25 percent vacancy in the downtown area after the development. And again, stressing that's just accounting for their parking lots that they're constructing, the fish hatchery lot, and the on-street uh, public parking that's available. Um, so in summary, looking at the traffic study, it's going to increase some traffic. The intersections are all going to still continue to operate very acceptably. Similar with the parking study, there will be an increased demand, which will modify the parking. There will be some increase in specific locations, but the overall occupants, again, will accommodate the revised um, increase in development. Thanks, Pat. We'll uh, move over to design now, so I'll hand it over to Josh. Josh Morey, Henry's Commercial Properties, 525 3rd Street, Wisconsin. Josh, what did you say your last name was? I couldn't quite hear you. Morey, M-O-R-Y. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to try to explain a little bit about what everybody's actually seen um, as far as the site plan and what, you know, the renderings that we've been showing. Um, I know a, a lot of the citizens probably, not, probably don't understand exactly, like, how we arrived at what, where we are. Um, so I just want to go through a couple of, uh, I guess, main points of how we got to this point um, with the design. And um, besides the stuff that Kyle already mentioned, um, as far as like the parking needs and all that, um, I'd just like to explain that, you know, we understand that this is a very important site and that it's not 100% financially driven for us. We could have completely maximized the square footage on this entire site and it would have been within zoning. Uh, we could have added a lot more leasable square footage to this entire um, development. Um, but what we were trying to do is take in all those different comments that we're getting from you guys and city staff and also from the public and the business owners. So we feel that we've really blended everything together into what you're seeing on the screen right now. I know that some of the things that we're doing don't exactly meet zoning, but zoning is guidelines. That's why we have variances. That's why we have conditional uses. So um, a couple of things I'd just like to point out, uh, once again, the parking, um, you know, we could have completely maximized the square footage on the site and done absolutely no parking. It's not required for the use of the before. So we are trying to listen and the parking that we want to. Um, we also understand that Genesee is like the main street in downtown Delfield. And so we feel that to enrich and just continue that character of the downtown uh, development, we want to front that street as much as possible. Um, and just continue that strip all the way along for, you know, pedestrian-friendly, human-scale uh, experience. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that uh, we create, you know, very small things uh, that are very experiential. I think architecture is experiential. Uh, so the things like that you see with the setback from Genesee on the East Building, uh, creating that semi-public zone is, you know, it's, it's an experience that is at that human scale that everybody wants. Um, so that brings more foot traffic in. Uh, we create a pocket park um, that's labeled right now as brick patio between the east and the west buildings, um, which creates more of a semi-private zone. 
Um, that's another experience. Um, it's, it's all about the different experiences that we create. Once again, we could have just completely maximized this entire site and it would have been a, just a horrible experience and it wouldn't have done anything, I guess, and so then it probably would have failed. So there's a method to our madness. Um, the West Building, specifically where it's labeled commercial right now, um, the depth of that building is 60 feet. And because of that, that is the optimal depth for a typical retail unit. Um, but it's also optimal depth for uh, a double loaded corridor for the residential above. So everything that we're doing here, the footprint that you see, there, there's a method to and why it's exactly the way it is. Um, the East Building, the footprint of that building is, uh, is close to a one-to-one -one ratio that we can get. That's really what you want to look for in an office floor plate. Um, the food hall that's going to be on the, the first floor, um, that we tried to maximize the amount of leasable square footage for that so that we can get as many tenants in as possible. So we're proposing that we can fit about nine different tenants total into that <coughs> space, um, which once again can create more experience. Um, just some other things. Another thing that I wanted to, I guess, bring up is, because I heard somebody talk about like stormwater management. Mm -hmm. So we have gone through a preliminary study in uh, doing the storm stormwater management, and one of the big things that we noticed um, when RA went through this is that because there was uh, the previous use for the site had underground storage tanks and there were leaks previously, we will not be allowed to do any on-site infiltration. So we have to do all of our stormwater management on-site and then collect it somewhere with retention. So. The idea, um, it was all calculated out at what that stormwater retention amount will be, and so we've actually have three different proposals of how we can manage that on site. Um, area A is within the existing um, property boundaries of 705, and it would be done underground, um, actually under the underground parking. Um, and then area B is actually on an adjacent site that we also own, and then area C is the same thing. So we have multiple areas where we feel we can accommodate this retention um, of the stormwater. Um, let's see. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was um, like fire access. That was also brought up by um, a few of the citizens. Uh, we have worked specifically with city staff and took the recommendations in from the fire department on access and how we would uh, provide access for fire trucks to you know, fight fires with this building if there ever was one. So. Um, we left this specifically so that you guys could understand this and the public could understand this, that we originally proposed the driveway entrance uh, further to the west, um, but we were asked by the fire department to move it further to the east so that they could get the fire truck in and have better access to the rear of the site. So that's what you're going to see um, in the proposed site plan um, right here. So that's why the drive comes directly in so they can get better access to the rear of those buildings. Um, I think the floor plans we kind of talked enough about. The setbacks uh, are another one that I really want to talk about because, because of the footprints that we've created um, and the dimensions that you know, are optimal for the use of the buildings um, and the parking that we are trying to accommodate, we don't feel that we can accommodate those setback requirements um, to, to make as an efficient use of the site as possible. So, you know, once again, we're asking to have a conditional use so that we can not have those exact setbacks so that we can maximize the efficiency of the site, not only for us, but also for the public access and also for um, anybody who wants to use the site. Um, if we, so one of the other things that came up during a, a previous staff meeting was just looking at alternatives to moving the West Building specifically um, to actually meet the setback requirements. And so we went through that exercise and what you can see here, um, I'll go to this one first, on this site plan, if we were to, let's say, move that same building footprint to you know, 20 feet to the south and then 20 feet to the east, um, what that does is you lose not only the surface parking stalls, which I believe are 14 stalls that we would lose on, you know, 16 we would actually lose um, as far as surface lot goes. When you go down, to the underground parking level, because of that shift in the building, um, it's not optimal for one structurally to make it work because it creates a really awkward structural grid for us. Um, and then you can't maximize then that site as much as far as parking needs. So 
uh, we approximated we're going to lose about 41 stalls underground uh, just because of that shift in the overall um, west building. Uh, let's see. The other thing with shifting that building, if you look back at this one, is that whole pocket park. Uh, because of that shift, that pocket park gets extremely tight. So you can see right here that um, you know we only have about 30 feet there, and I'm you know with a taller building and 30 feet, it's going to be an extremely I guess awkward space to be in. It's going to be very shady. Uh, not a lot of people are going to want to use that space. Um, and the other thing would be just the uh, fire access. You know, moving the buildings closer together for one. Uh, it just creates more of a fire hazard. Uh, it would be within <clears throat> code, we would still be allowed to do it, but it, just, it creates more of a fire hazard. The access to uh, the rear of the property would be a lot more difficult. Um, I think I'm gonna turn it over to Kent then to talk a little bit more about the, uh, the details of the buildings themselves. I am Kent Johnson from Johnson Design. Um, what I'd like to talk a little bit about tonight is uh, kind of how we got to this style of the building, uh, talk about the diversity. We, we think that, you know, that word, I brought that word up several times at other meetings. Uh, diversity in a city, I think, is critically important. I think that everything being the same uh, does not create the excitement that Josh was kind of hinting at here a little bit, uh, and what Rob had talked about as well. And I just want to read something and put a packet together, and we... We called this packet a precedent study, but I think it's also a diversity study because if you look around Delafield, there's a lot of diverse architecture, starting with this building, um, looking at even all the buildings that we were involved in through the years with Bob Lang, um, they're all very diverse buildings. The Town Bank building does not look at all like the Delafield Hotel building. Uh, that doesn't look at all like the Genesee or a Delafield Square building, but there's one commonality that you start to see when you look at these buildings in town. Now, you look at the new the new apartments over here. If you look at this building right in here, if you look at the, with sort of to an exception, the, the fire station building over there, because they really don't have the same thing, but the commonality is, is brick in this downtown area. Now, we have made both of these buildings uh, principally out of brick. And as Rob mentioned earlier, what we're going to see, and it's very difficult to see in these renderings because it is a fairly, you know, large scale. We're trying to take a lot in here, and you can't really see it. But the, the detailing that we're going to present with these buildings, not only from uh, the base, the mid section, and the, and the top section, um, is greatly uh, more detailed than all the buildings that I've been involved in here in Delfield over the last 20 to 25 years. So there's, a, there's going to be a great amount of um, emphasis put on the detailing on this building. Um, I just want to read this real quickly. We, this is kind of the our commonality that we really share as a group, and it talks about architectural diversity in a city is an important function of a healthy city with a mix of style, function, and use to keep the city thriving. So we don't believe that everything needs to be the same. We think the buildings must have a, a mix of age and style, it kind of allows people to see that there is growth going on in the city, there is change going on in the city, and it's not just the same cookie cutter stuff. It's not just the same um, shopping center design put on another site. It's, it's different and it's exciting and it brings about, um, I think, the, uh, the um, thought of, uh, of successful change and growth and transformation in the city. A key to the building design is in the details. I mean, you'll hear me talk about that all the time as an architect, and we've worked very hard to that extent. Um, we can look at some of these drawings that Josh is putting up here in just a second. But we also feel that, you know, this is a very important site, and, and the site in, you know, the corner of Genesee and Maine, I mean, that's really the center. What we want to do with this building is really develop the center of the downtown, of downtown Delafield, really create this as a center. We have uh, Delafield Square already set back off the road. We're setting this back off the road, creating this public plaza space, uh, which we think, you know, it does not tighten our view quarters, does not cause issues with shadows and things like that that we've heard a little bit about tonight. It does set back and it really creates kind of this community center of the, of the, uh, of the city. And we think for that reason, the building can have a little bit more height than is currently allowed <coughs> by our zoning codes. Um, so we talked a little bit about that. Let me go backwards just for a second here. Um, 
the building that you know we talked about, we heard comments tonight, um, a trendy design, um, a factory, things like that. that that's the farthest from the truth. It's not a trendy design. We actually, when we started thinking about this building, we were thinking about a building that was really going to be designed like a turn of the century, 20th century, not this century, um, department stores, downtown, things like that. And then we softened it up. We wanted to take away some of the, the factory elements, but we want to soften up with a lot of brick detailing, um, which we're going to, um, I'll talk about in just a second. Um, but we thought that, um, you know, this building really was, was going to be, did not have to be of the same style, but it would pick up the same characteristics as a lot of the buildings in the uh, downtown Delphil area, like the cornice piece you're looking at right now uh, that Josh has up there. We've got a cornice on the top of both buildings. It's fairly, um, it's pretty large, pretty detailed. Same kind of thing we did on the town bank building way back when. Um, and then as you come down to the middle portion of the building, uh, again, brick detail with, um, you've got um, uh, stone headers and lintels and things on the building as well. So again, creating a lot of detail. That's going to be accented by lighting. Uh, so the building will be lit softly at night. And again, emphasize the details that you really can't see here in some of these renderings. Um, the base of the building, um, and the building is very much a three-part building with the base being very important because that's really our pedestrian element. Uh, in both buildings, the uh, entries to the retail area are covered with some canopy areas. So that allows us to break the building scale down so you're not walking up to a building and looking up four stories in the air and seeing a building. You're really, um, it's really reading as a building that is comforting you at the one story scale. And you can, again, you can see above where the canopies are, we've got another pretty detailed uh, area of cornice. Um, again, emphasizing detail making it feel more quaint, making the buildings feel a lot more um, of, of a pedestrian scale. So we think that's very important. Um, in terms of height, uh, things like this at the building, I just want to simply, just quickly, just note a couple buildings we have around here in town. Um, our building that we're proposing is, is 62 feet 6 inches from the first floor, the finished floor of the first level to the parapet. Currently in this town, we have several buildings I want to just talk about a comparison to. Delafield Hotel height is 60 feet to the main roof ridge, and the cupola goes 98 feet in the air. Um, I know, and it's also a bigger building and a much less detailed building than one that we're proposing tonight. The Well Street Station Department buildings are 48 foot 6 inches from their exposed lower level. Delafield Square, which is just to the south of our proposal here, is 52 feet from the finished floor of the first level. And then the Milwaukee building, Milwaukee Street Traders, I guess, building is 57 feet. So it's only about five feet different. And that sits just back to the northwest of our, of our site. So again, they're very close in size. Our building at 62.6 uh, is not much bigger. And we think that, uh, again, we really feel like it's going to develop, develop uh, the center of the city. Talked a little bit about the cornices, um, about the whole area of the plinth being more, resi more residential or, or pedestrian scaling character. A lot of details in the wood base. So we're going to try to soften that up, uh, not un similar to some of the buildings uh, that you or some of the storefronts you see at Delafield Square. Um, the brick reveals, again, I talked about that. Um, a lot of detailing on the brick that you're going to be able to see not only during the daytime, because it's going to create some nice articulation and shadow lines on the building, but also at night with the, and we're going to help accent those details with lighting and soft lighting and, you know, probably a lighting that's going to be a dark sky type concept where you're not seeing the direct lights on the building. Um, and also, um, the applied balconies we have on the residential portion of the building, we feel like that really tries to help accent the uh, more residential feel of the building. So a lot of, a lot of um, design going into this. There's a tremendous amount of passion about making this a spectacular building uh, in Delafield and make, being a, a real central part of the city. Um, and that's about all I, I have tonight. Uh, I can We can field questions and things, but I think that Kyle has got a few more things he wants to discuss before we're, uh, we'll move on. Thank you.
So I guess um, just to kind of wrap up uh, our presentation here, um, I think the conditional uses that we're looking for and that um, Roger outlined in his report is a conditional use for um, residential, which um, many of the surrounding buildings also have. I just want to point out that they also have conditional use for residential, and I think it works very well downtown. Um, and we are requesting a conditional use for building height, both going from three floors to four and um, going from the 45 foot um, height maximum to what we're proposing to the top of the roof line, which is actually 60 feet on the east building and 52 feet on the west, and also um, tying in with that, not having the correct setbacks, um, but for the reasons we explained, we think it maximizes the site, and um, so that the setbacks would be part of that. Um, with that being said, I think we'll open it up to getting you guys feedback. Our, our goal here is to get to a public hearing as soon as possible. Um, so we'd appreciate any feedback and any questions you may have. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to go first. Um, I just want to thank Hendrix Properties for investing in the city of Delfield. You know, I, almost everyone I know and talk to is excited about that. We're glad that you've invested money in the community to upgrade and do some much needed maintenance on many of the buildings that you purchased downtown. Um, and I think everyone here, whether their opinion was, was one way or the other on the architecture and so forth, we all support economic development. We want to see you be successful and we want to see you be able to, 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 to build a building that's going to help the businesses in downtown and generate economic growth. But we have to do that in a way that complies with the current zoning and follows the comprehensive plan. And when we and I'm confident that there is a spot where we can all agree and we can meet what's required in the zoning and the code and you could be successful. I, it's going to take some work, but I'm confident there's a compromise that we can come to. So I encourage you to, to think about that. And a fundamental problem we have is when we say zoning is you know, guidelines, that, that, that's a fundamental difference. Zoning is not guidelines, right? Zoning is a zoning. We have a process to change the zoning and the ordinances and the code if we, if, if we need to or want to. That is a process. The process isn't to just do it through conditional use. So thank you for coming, and that's what I had to say. I have a question, uh, a couple questions. Uh, you, you spoke with the fire department, correct, on all this from what I'm gathering? Showing them the four stories and the layout of that uh, to the to the properties to the north, uh, the tall building and all that. Are there any concerns they brought up with four stories or fire access in case something happened? Uh, <clears throat> when we met with staff and Kevin, his biggest concern was we had a version at that time from the previous plan commission where we actually took the fourth floor and we reduced uh, the actual footprint of that and kind of shrunk it into the middle of the building. He liked that less, he said, than he did the four stories because now he has to take a ladder up and carry a ladder over a roof to get to the four, get to that actual four story. He didn't say anything about concerns about the other buildings other than what Joss addressed in terms of getting trucks in in, in a little bit better manner than what we originally had designed. Uh, that's where you see the parking lot and kind of how we adjust it there. Okay. Um, and let me just clarify that. What you said is true. And the reason he had the issue with the setback on the fourth floor was because of the distance from the street to the setback. As long as he could get that truck going between the two buildings, he did not have that concern, which you agreed you could, would be able to do with proper supporting and marking on the roads that the truck could get between the two buildings, which from the fire chief's perspective did allow the opportunity to set back the fourth floor if you chose to do so. Uh, the other one is uh, ex explaining the traffic that you, that you talked about. You say this would take it to a level C. Let's assume that most people in this room don't know what a level C is and what percentage of increase that's, that's gaining currently from what we have. So basically right now, all of our movements on the intersections are between an A, a B, and a C. So we do have level of service C movements um, at the Genesee and Well Street intersection. Let's go to the, that's the existing. 
in the future with the development, those remain at level service C, and Genesee, Genesee Street with Main, there's uh, some of the movements are at level of service C as well. Does C mean like three or four cars at a stop sign, or four yeah. or five, or six or seven? Or what does that point. mean? So it's the criteria for stop control, I believe, for level of service C is. It's, it's based more on the delay as you're coming up to an intersection, so not in terms of the vehicle stacking back. Right. But to kind of conf bring it back to like a backup state, I would say, you know, probably like a, th a three to five vehicle backup. Okay. During peak times. During peak times, yeah, yeah. very good point. Right, so. Yeah, I, I, I understand that it wouldn't be, you know, all day long. I, it's just what I was curious about how much of an increase yeah. that would be. Going to, to make a comment too with citizens' comments. You know, looking at this initially, it's a big building. It's a big setup. It's going to look big no matter what because it's a vacant lot right there. But hearing the business owners down there, and I think we have to take that into a strong consideration. Is you know, there's elements why businesses leave, why they close up, all that. But as a as a city, we have to look at that and say, what do we have to do to help this be viable? It's economics in a lot of ways. So we have to say, what do we have to do to service that? How can we make this, how can we make this better? And quite honestly, I was surprised to hear what I, what I heard today. Um, I, I, you know, I guess I'm glad to hear the, the, the strong support you're getting from that, from the businesses downtown. Uh, so I just want to take that, that thought and go forward with this process, uh, that we take that into a, a really a strong consideration of what business owners they've invested their life into being down here to you know they love the community but they also want to make they want to succeed and we have to as a, as a city try to help them succeed at this so just wanted to make that comment can you tell me when you did your studies the dates of the traffic counts and the parking counts yes were collected in April of traffic counts were collected in April of 2018 <coughs> parking study April of 18 also for the weekday and Saturday midday and then we collected um, Thursday and Friday evening peaks in May and June of 2018 so this isn't your reports here don't really cover the heart of the summer months when we get a lot of traffic in Delafield um, or the quarry starts running. And it will run from dawn till dusk. Till the, till the what starts running? The trucks from the quarry. Yeah. So because those will be running through Delafield from dawn till dusk in the summer months. So, we ha so your report to me is lacking in that it doesn't consider that because Delafield gets very busy in the summer months. Matter of fact, there are many weekends I avoid downtown because it gets so busy down here. Even during the day, during peak periods, it is busier because it's nice. People like to walk around. They like to eat outside at the restaurants. So to me, um, this report is somehow lacking because it doesn't really tell a true story of high periods of time. And typically what we do is we look at kind of an annual basis and if we were to count it in January, February, which are typically lower months, we would have bumped that up. May, June is considered kind of average and as a whole, standard traffic studies, national practice, the DOT, all typical agencies recommend that you look at average or slightly above. We consider kind of the May, June period to be kind of that shoulder season going into the summer. In fact, both of the supplemental parking studies that were in the evening were selected so that they were nice weather days. Mm -hmm. We delayed a couple of the first ones in Wisconsin, May and June, it can be a little iffy, um, but so that there would be a lot of activity. There'd be outdoor seating at Revere's and some heavy activity for that. So well, I hear what you're saying. Our, our study follows national practices. It was reviewed you know, by the city, by the city's traffic engineer, 
um, by public works and kind of based on kind of standard practices for what is is best. Um, well, I understand that. I understand that. I my neighbor well, here is works. I with did want to say that because I don't know that that had come out there. We had asked Pat to come to public works committee meeting last year, um, <coughs> spring about this time maybe yeah. last year, and add that parking study and go and we. Thoroughly vetted the traffic study, and there is a traffic engineer on Public Works Committee. Pat used to be a member of that for many years, and we felt very confident it was a pretty good representation of what the traffic is. Like Pat says, you can always pick out peak times in a festival or something, but you got to look at the whole year and then average it out. Yeah, and that's, this is his concert is supposed to be average, not yeah, for those the whole are, year. Okay. Um, average annual. Yeah. Counts. Yeah. Okay. And so we look at you know, during Delafield days and different activities, are there going to be higher demands? Will the, the backups be longer than this? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Not a two lane road. Yeah. Which, which can, even if the traffic increases significantly, mm. a two lane road can still more than handle um, the amount of traffic that we're going to be showing out there. A two lane road has a lot of capacity to it, the intersections themselves. Um, you know, can still have a lot of additional capacity. You know, we look at a statewide basis in terms of level of service, and we talk about level of service C conditions where we're at right now. The standard is often usually level of service D that we can go to in terms of what is considered acceptable um, delay for the motorist. So most motorists, until it gets that level of service D, are okay. I'm slowing down a little bit, but it's not at the point of this is this is really. A bad condition. So there's definite room for growth even beyond the Hendricks development to accommodate additional traffic, additional development in the area, which will also address kind of those seasonal peaks as well. Well, <clears throat> I'll, I'll agree to disagree, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> because I've... of my, I live right on the other side of the bridge over here. <clears throat> And I know that it's been studied multiple times, and I know from driving it over 46 years, almost 46 years now, how bad it can get, especially for people who live to the east trying to turn on Genesee during the peak hours. So I know how bad it can get. So. Well, I'd, I'd find fault with you if, <laughs> if you took it when school wasn't in. You know, so yeah. um, so April's, April kind of works for me. Um, if you're not, I've got a couple comments, unless you're going. Go ahead. So I'll just give you my brief experience in dealing with this, because I have had the luxury of sitting in on some of the staff meetings and, as well and seeing the different iterations. I appreciate the, the, the history of an evolution of where you're, where you're at. And um, <laughs> I think I've said to, the, to one or more of you that um, I thought that when we had the second iteration formally in front of us, that some of the give and take that we were really close and um, so I'm glad you're back um, and a couple of points as far as um, you know I'll say first of all that it's growing on me you know the, the scale is growing on me and, and partially because of well, a couple of reasons um, one some of the fault I found in the in the in critiquing the site in particular is how how you approach it from the south into town and visually how it presents itself in scale from like the Welcome to Delafield sign right by Cushing School as you're heading north. Um, it, by your illustration, it's 40 to 45 feet lower in elevation than that entrance to the city. And so the scale of it actually works to your advantage in presenting a bigger building from that particular elevation because otherwise you're seeing nothing but roof. Um, or you're going to be building up a facade and to, to, to mask it or screening for mechanicals on the top of the building. So I think, I think this, the scale there works, works to your advantage. And also um, the proximity, how close it is to the street. Um, one of the cr letters of critique was um, how you present parking on the south side of the apartment building in the retail space there, that it's like a kind of a mall or I forget what, what words were used there to describe it. Um, tacky was one of the adjectives, but that you're, you're actually distancing yourself from the retail shops via parking. And aesthetically, I think that is an issue with the, 
with the Delafield Square. I mean, mm -hmm. you're seeing the great harvest and you're walking across a parking lot to get there. You're not following paths. Um, so there's something to be said about having a building that close to the street with the retail spaces because they're, they're right there and you've got a little bit of a gathering space. Um, all that said, I still, I'm still struggling with the height on that building with the proximity to the road, um, even though I'm con contradicting myself. So that's something that, um, you know, what I've contemplated is some compromise with um, maybe some sort of a corner structure or tower on that that maybe goes up four stories and maybe mask some of that roof appeal um, or roof, the roof issues I mentioned. Um, but that's something to, something to think about, and I've, I'll, I'll, I'll send you an example of what I'll talk about next. And that's um, I know in one of one or more of our conversations, I, I mentioned um, in talking with a local historian. He suggest, you know, I, I asked him what he'd like there. He was the curator for Hawks Inn, what he'd recommend, and that's the original Hawks Inn site. He suggested and actually gave some illustrations of a turn of the century. 1900 hotel um, and if you just google 1900 hotel Wisconsin there's a hotel in Janesville it looks almost exactly like this building with the cornice and everything um, I can send you that as well but there's also one that has a corner tower that adds some appeal but so I think to say that this is a trendy or modernistic design is flawed because it does, you mentioned department store that you do get and get that vibe from a 1900 department store but there's several examples in Wisconsin. There's one in Merrill, and a, like I said, a, just a simple Google brings up lots of images that shows that this is a pretty classic 1860s to 1910 hotel or um, like retail space. Um, so, you know, it's not colonial. It's not 1700s Williamsburg, but it's Hawks Inn-ish as far as timeline, even though it's way bigger than Hawks Inn. Um, as far as the uh, apartment building, I appreciate the... Um, or the condos, um, I appreciate the, uh, the desire to get the parking underground um, and the parking spaces, regardless of maybe how they present themselves. Um, downtown needs it, retail spaces will need it, the residents will need it, visitors will use it. Um, uh, contrary to what someone brought up, I think that, um, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who's gonna walk across a parking lot in the rain or the snow to get to a retail spot to forego underground parking. I think they'll be used first in nine, ten months out of the year. Um, so having them there is, is a boon to the, your ability to lease the space, use the space, get the top dollar for it, and bring the right people in here for it. But um, So the trade-off of having it on the north end of the property as opposed to having it, so let, let me ask a question. Um, if they took that same building and centered it north-south, I think I know the answer, but um, based on the height set setback, the gain of height for setting back from the lot line, that illustration on the right there, would that the, comply the with the blue building, Tim? I'm talking about the no, the red build, building, the red there. The red building. Um, the residential uh, building. Um, if it was configured like that, that more than likely would comply with our height restrictions for our zoning code, or does it not? Uh, that comes very close. I think we discussed this in plan staff, and they could be achieved. Um, okay, so in that, in that instance, I mean, I appreciate the trade-off and the elevation you have from the, from the west, from the northwest of that corner with um, the building just to the north of it um, provides, you know, what that impact would be like, and that's something we need to take into consideration for a conditional use. Um, that one there, you know, how 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 does that scale? How does it look? Um, because of that gap in between for the parking and the berm there, um, it, it seems it seems manageable. Um, but so in summary, my I'm still I'm struggling with the the height on the road, even though I'm in favor of having the retail space that close. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure what my direction is, other than the fact that boy, it'd be easier if it just complied. Um, or if there's a way to, to notch it or, or whatever um, to make it work. But um, like I said, maybe a, maybe a tower on that corner piece would mask the roof line and you'd forego some internal um, office space on that structure. But um, anyway, that's kind of my, my, general, my general gist. And I, and, and I trust the traffic study. I'm, 
asked some good questions when that was up before. I don't see that much change. Um, and your water issues are your water issues. You got to comply. And I'm glad there's a, um, proposing this as opposed. I think it's better for the water table not have gas buried underneath the lot there. I would like to oh, go ahead. reiterate what the mayor said as to um, zoning, zoning and ordinances. Zoning and ordinances, our comprehensive plan is our guidelines. Zoning and ordinances are law. That's why there, there's a big process to go through when you want to change the law. So I'd like to clear that up. And within the CBD-1, it clearly states that no building may exceed three floors above grade. Um, I'm one who strongly adheres to the zoning and ordinances. And also within the CBD one, it says right here that the intent of a CBD one district is to allow and encourage the development and redevelopment of the downtown area as a specialized retail district that maintains the historic character of the area, traditional lot layout and street grid, traditional architectural design that is unique to downtown Delafield. We, this district, the CBD-1, is our historic district. I can tell you right now because I've spoken with a complex home planner over there, they have what they call an overlay district that is similar to this that's even more strict because they are really are strong on protecting their historic districts. That's why we have this. Um, to me, um, the only problem, I, when you picked up the architectural details on it, which I really do like, I think what for me it is is the color of the building. It makes it look very massive and not that appealing. Um, must be the color of the brick or that black I see down below. Um, I, I like to see a little architectural d details. And the problem when you keep bringing up Wall Street Station, that did not turn out the way it was supposed to be. So please don't bring that up. It's kind of like an eyes over for me. It's a sore spot for me because I spoke against it because I had a feeling that was the way it was going to go. It should have had more architectural detail. Um, make the building smaller. Because of code. Code. Code and So can I ask you, backs. can I just ask a question? Sure. You mentioned the CBD1 district. Yeah. So you're suggesting that you would never build anything in the CBD1 district that's here currently, right? No. I'm not, I'm well, not against is, something they're, they're different. Wait, conditional wait, wait. uses. Wait, no. Yes, they uh, are. I, I, this is you, this uh, is my law that I go on, in that it says no building may exceed three floors above grade, no building. This is our historic district. I'm saying this is you know I could probably if we do a little tweaking that I could probably live with this, just that the three the four floors I'm mm -hmm. I, it just towers when I see your view of how it would look coming from the north or the south on Genesee Street, I'm like, oh. and then I look at our old city hall next to it, which looks like a doghouse, actually, with four stories next to it. I, I just have a, a real problem with four stories. Uh, Conwalk's having a real problem with, with developers coming in, because he said if they he's got people coming in and want to put in 10 stories. So, you have to put the limit someplace. Can I just make a point? So the view coming from, I guess, the southern part of Genesee, if you look at it, it's almost the exact same height as Delafield Square. Exact same. This, this is accurate. The image that you see is accurate within like a foot. But when you're coming from the, from the north, and when I see the building, I see but that doesn't the, the, the other point buildings is, behind it. Delafield Square is just as tall, though. If you were coming from the north, looking at Delafield Square, it's just as tall. Delafield Square is how many feet? 45? Depends upon where you measure it. 
Huh? It depends on where you measure it. Oh, oh there we go. Right. Four you stories. can measure it on one end yeah. and you can measure Wait, it's it on not the other. Complete four stories. It's further back. It's taller on the north end and less height on the south end because of the hill. Yeah. Well, it's not a true four story though, where the whole. whole walk them. Walk yeah, go in and walk them. Four, four stories. Four stories. <laughs> just, yeah, the fourth story <laughs> is not the, the same <laughs> footprint as the other right. floors. It's step. Yeah. But it's only, it's not the complete roof line. No, I don't believe it is. It's stepped in. There, 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 there is a fourth floor there, but it complies with the setbacks, right? That's yeah. the difference. It doesn't seem so big because it complies with the setbacks. Your proposal does not. Yeah. I'm going to say that I'm, I'm probably somewhere between Tim and Laura. I'm not so hung up on the number of floors. I'm a little... I have a little issue with the height. If, you know, I apologize, I forgot to bring my glasses in, but if I remember correctly, isn't the first floor of the east building 16 feet? And then the sub subsequent floors are 14 feet? Floor to floor. Yes. So would there be any room for compromise to lower that the 14 foot floor and maybe the other ones to 12 and you bring everything down six, seven feet? That's just a suggestion. I. Certainly something. Like I said, I'm not so hung up on the four floors, but the height is. Yeah. No, I don't, we don't have a problem looking at that at all. Uh, you know, and jumping back to the color aspect of it, color is the least of. We can work with that. Yeah. yeah. To be honest with you. It, it, I was going to. Just notice the first building's kind of. Just battery went out. But you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think that what I think you have to, we all have to understand, number one. We can all agree that this is the most important piece in Delafield. And um, it's the stagecoach in where it was, the stagecoach came. And I think that was a really well pointed out idea that maybe that would be something to identify it with in some form mm -hmm. historically. Um, but I also think that if we look back from the first time we met on this, and then we met the second time, and um, so then there was a little hiatus for a while. But then when we, what happens is, and maybe it's a blessing in disguise, but when we, as we see first and second, there wasn't, other than a division to two buildings, we still had some of the same concerns. I had raised the issue in the beginning, is just softening it up, getting a little change of color, a little European design, or something a little, you know, charming to consistent with what we're doing in Delafield. And I, I've been so involved with Park and Recreation Commission trying to make things right for the city and natural boundaries to make people feel real comfortable here. That's what this is too. It's not maybe a meandering river or the opening up of trees and space, but what we did was we took a canopy of darkness into vision and space and light for people to really enjoy. And that's how I see when I listen to you um, and I see the passion and the energy that you want to have this experience to be for people who come. That it's really not only charming, but it's, it's unique. It's very um, um, comfortable for people to come and say, there's nothing like this. There's nothing like this. So when I saw the one that you don't want to talk about, <laughs> this one, um, I immediately thought, well, you know, this is what I kind of talked about. Not necessarily the design itself, but just breaking it up in colors. And then having something on the rooftop at a corner, like Tim was talking about, the roof issues. So I know you don't want to talk about it, but you can understand when we see it, that would be, at least my reaction was when I first saw it, because I saw it before I saw this one, the one that you got here, I said, oh, well, that's kind of what we talked about. So then when we went back to this one, then it was like, oh, that's sort of my back before. But now that I've heard you, it's different. I've heard more the detail. And I, I've talked to Kent about this before, about the detail and softening up and getting in a little bit of a, kind of almost, a, almost a European look to it that it gives a flavor and identity. So, um, but I think we, we have to keep focused. And if, you, if color change and texture and warmth is something and uniqueness, that's what I'm more interested in. The height issue, I'm concerned about the height issue from the standpoint that we don't want to feel like you're going downtown Chicago. And oh, look at this tower. 
You want to have it set back as far as you can so people can see the light that I bring out again, light and space. I don't want that compromised so much. And it's hard. Uh, so, so when I see it and when I listen to everybody here, and I think the fact that the business people are, are very involved in it, that's important for us. And contrary to some people's popular belief, I don't know what it, why it is, but this commission really works hard to try to encourage reasonable development. We, don't, we can't control what happens in the Common Council or anything else, but this commission does. Um, and we take that seriously and we try to accommodate reasonable, deliberate process rather than just saying yay or nay because of, oh, it's too big, it's too small. I think this commission would work with that. And hopefully, uh, I know maybe you felt that we didn't give you enough guidelines or directions. I thought I'd given some comments about it in terms of texture and charm and design. But be that as it may, we aren't in the past. We're in the future. And I just want to give you some feeling from us is that I think this has been beneficial to listen to the detail. And I respect uh, Kent's design skills. And I think you are very fortunate to have him do this. And uh, so I, I just want you to know that from, at least from my end, I think there's, there's progress that has been made. I like, I, it's just, I'm going to want to get away from that bulk behemoth factory quote look that, every, that not everybody, but some people are talking. Soften it up and make it creative and make it really unique and say, did you go to Delphi? Did you see that building? That is so cool. As opposed to, oh my God. Because this is a legacy that we're all going to live with. We're, after we're all gone, it's still going to be here. And you want to have people say, they come from everywhere to come to this place in Delphi. That's what I think we all want. We all. Uh, Josh is going to show you. Now, this hasn't been explored too much other than the color itself, mm -hmm. uh, so it, it will need more. But yeah, like I said, the color is the least of my concerns uh, by all. Areas. Well, I like the brick. The brick's great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I, sometimes I don't know how well these things look on the TV as much as once you get the real samples stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not going to see the details in, in the cornices that are actually there. Um, but this was just a quick. Uh, kind of run at that back building with something you would see a little bit more uh, of a lighter gray. Yeah, I think that looks much better yes. than the brown. Yes, yeah. much better. Yeah. Yeah. Now the front one I like actually more than the brown, uh, if you might not, because it's green. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's like it's, gimbals. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's supposed to be Those of us who know gimbals. Schuster. Schuster. We haven't gone too in depth on the, yeah. not, on the coloring and stuff yet, but I mean, that's certainly something we can explore even further, you know. Uh, I thought, I, I did like the back building a lot. I yeah. think that uh, took it a little more residential um, feel to it. Are you looking residential in terms of apartments or condos or a mix? Condos is what we have slated for in here, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rob, have you given any consideration of signage on your ground level there for your commercial uses? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Have you given any consideration to how you're going to handle signage for your ground level commercial uses? Um, in well, in that particular building there, yeah, we've talked about it. It's when you get into a food hall application, it's it's much more difficult uh, because even a little 200 square foot food hall wants to have a really amazing sign. So, and we've done these food halls before. And to be honest with you, the food hall will actually get named, and then that'll be that's it. Whatever Joe's food hall, whatever you know, create we come up with. The signage for the interior people will be actually interior. Okay. You know, uh, so this will be whatever food hall but uh, we name it. We haven't gotten that far in the naming of it. The other building is probably a little bit more consistent with what you would see at Delphi Square. Yeah, I like the looks now of the building that I see in the back before with the black on it. It looked harsh. That looks much everything. better. Color changes everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just as a matter of, excuse me, oh, go ahead. Where, where would be the deliveries for these businesses? Where the fire yes. trucks are. Or what the fire, hopefully. <laughs> where the hope. fire trucks are. <laughs> we don't hopefully want that. they never show up, I hope. Uh, uh, we never need to. Uh, no, kind of where that fire truck lane would be. Because okay. that'll be the main area between there. Yeah. Is there some possibility of having some identifying markers or anything on the corner of that roofing, like Tim had mentioned well, about? I put that sign on originally, if you remember, on the yeah. roof. But I don't know if you guys <laughs> no, no. No, we already got one. We got one Chick-fil-A coming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
But um, no, I was just thinking in terms of, you know, even though you don't want to talk about this one, but on the corner, having that, um, like almost a cupola look, it does give it a look that I think is good. Yeah, I, I think Tim brought up a building that actually yeah. Josh and I are very familiar with in Janesville. Yes, um, that, I'm familiar with that. That yeah. looked pretty good to me. And I think that it's, it softens that everything up. It gives its definition, it gives its bit. style, yeah. which you, what I think we all should want style yeah. here. I mean, the one, you know, I think that's, that's actually a pretty cool element to it. And it's not overly dominant. You know, right. It's there. It, it, it certainly is noticeable, but it's not like a big giant corner cupola type of thing. It gets an identity. It's a brand that people remember. And yeah. it's that style. Get, this is kind of a brand thing. Yeah. Can you tell me just how, how much acreage there is here? 1.06. Oh, it's not that. It seems like it's bigger than an acre. It's an acre? Yeah, just a little mm. over an acre. I think the problem here that my husband discussed is to me with photography. He says you, sometimes it, it, you can take something, make a building look very big on a small piece of property. And I think that's what I'm getting is that reflection. Because um, with an acre. Well, it's a small piece of property. Yeah, it's, not, it's but, really not going to be that. These buildings really won't be that big then. As, as what we're interpreting. Do you understand, like when you take, you can take a photo, mm -hmm. a professional can take a photo to make something look bigger or make it look smaller. <coughs> and what I'm saying is that what I'm getting from your designs is this huge monolith, when really an acre, it, these buildings won't be all that big. No, it, yeah. Delfield Square, I think, uh, is smaller than that, uh, in, I mean, in terms of land, yeah. with that size of a building on it. So. These, these aerials are like accurate within like 99 percent that you see. I, the buildings were taken exactly and geolocated <coughs> every corner of the building and then put directly in Google Earth. So what you, what you see on the screen is accurate to mm -hmm. the actual scale of the adjacent buildings. I, I um, think though that the suggestion of yeah. bringing the, the floors down in size a little mm -hmm. bit would help. And we'll tweak with colors and things. And we can we definitely will play with that. Um, we do have challenges uh, in terms of heating ducts and stuff, and eventually you kind of get to a point of no return. Yeah. Uh, but it certainly can be. We what uh, source are you going to use for water? Well, yeah. we'll do a high capacity well, just well, like we have up the hotel and at Delta yeah. Square. And like will any of these buildings be sprinklered? They all. Oh, yeah. They will be. Okay. Oh yeah. Is that that's in Oh yeah. Yeah. You have to have a tank, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Use all that runoff water. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we're going to have a hard stop at 11. Anybody okay. else have any additional feedback? I think this was very productive.